Hello class, I'm Professor Hughes for Clark College's Network Technology Department. This is the CCNA 3 course in Tech 223 Scaling Networks. We're today going to have our lecture on Chapter 3, Link Aggregation. Link aggregation is really cool. It's a way to take existing ports on your switches and bundle them together into a single logical link. Let's take a look at some concepts. So you can add a number of physical links logically together and get the aggregate bandwidth of all the members of the logical group, as is shown here. This can allow you to get higher bandwidth uh, links between your switches, uh, mainly for trunks, although they can also be access ports, and uh, it allows you to um, uh, do that uh, various ways. There's even some server uh, NICs that support link aggregation, some uh, you know four-port uh, PCI cards you can put in servers that you could use four one-gig uh, Ethernet ports, for instance, to get a single logical four-gigabit port. Advantages of Ether Channel. It's easy to configure. You just do it right on the interface. Relies on existing switch ports. You don't have to buy upgrades. That's the whole point. It uh, load balances between the links, so it utilizes all, all your links and sends uh, the frames down each one. And it uh, creates a single logical link, so STP uh, operates as normal, so your spanning tree is seen by the logical link and not the physical link, so it's not picked up as a loop, and it provides redundancy, and um, overall link is uh, viewed as one logical connection. And I, I should mention, if one or more of the cables fall out or are taken out or the ports are shut down, the logical link marches on. It just has a reduced bandwidth. So it's got a redundancy in that way as well. You've got some restrictions in terms of um, the ether channels you can build. You have restrictions in how many logical port groups you can create on one physical switch and also how many ports can be in one group. Okay. And that will depend on the switch model. Also, interface types can't be mixed. So you can't have, you know, a access port mixed with a um, mixed with a trunk port. They'd all have to be access ports in the same uh, VLAN or all trunk ports trunking the same VLANs. And you can't have like uh, 10 megabit ports and 100 megabit ports. They'd all have to be the same speed. So you could create a ether channel out of your gigabit ports as shown in the illustration at the right and a separate uh, ether channel out of your 10 100 um, gig ports on the other side but you couldn't uh, mix and match the ports. Okay. Ether channel can consist up to, up to 16 uh, ports put into one channel group. And most switches will let you create a couple ether channels, sometimes up to eight of them and sometimes more. It says here the Cisco iOS switch currently supports six ether channels. It really depends on the switch model. But for the exam, we'll go with six ether channels as a maximum on a physical switch. There's a couple flavors of ether channel. So we've got uh, Cisco proprietary PAGP. And PAGP is a Cisco ether channel and it's got the following modes on, desirable, and auto. So you can see in the table here, if you had two switches configured for PAGP, if they were both set to the mode on, they would establish an ether channel. If they were set to auto and desirable, they would establish an ether channel. If they were set to um, desirable and desirable, they would form an ether channel. So let's see where you don't get an ether channel. If you have chosen on desirable or auto on one side and not configured it, of course you don't get an ether channel. Both sides have to be configured. And if you choose on and desirable, it doesn't form an ether channel, okay? If you choose auto and auto, it doesn't form an ether channel. Or on and auto, it doesn't form an ether channel. So some of these are not very intuitive. You would assume auto, auto would automatically be an ether channel, but it is not. Where desirable, desirable is. Well, you know, 
on and on basically doesn't negotiate the ether channel it just turns it on the others uh, attempt to negotiate the ether channel LACP is the industry standard, open standard for the same thing, for link aggregation. It's also supported on your Cisco switch, so you can make an LACP Ether channel. And it has the following three modes. Uh, roughly, they're the same as for PAGP, just with different names. It's uh, on, active, and passive. And they have an equally confusing little table here where if it's on, on, it's um, going to be an ether channel. If it's active, active, it's an ether channel. If it's passive, active, it's an ether channel. And any other combination is not going to result in an ether channel. These two tables are going to be really significant for you to have in your notes for exams and ultimately to know for the CCNA exam because they do have questions on link aggregation and uh, it may be a troubleshooting question on why the link is not uh, is not forming, you know, why why it's not uh, coming up, and it could be because the mode uh, settings on both sides. Let's look at the configuration of link aggregation protocols. They're so simple to configure. First, you have to have a switch that supports Ether channel. Not all switches do. Your speed and duplex must match, so you can't have full duplex and half duplex ports. Most ports are full duplex, so that's not a concern, but the speed does have to match. Uh, the VLANs have to match. All interfaces are in the same VLAN, so if they're access ports, they're all in whatever VLAN you want them to be in. And if they're trunks, they have to all be trunking the same VLAN, so you can't have one trunk port pruned where some of the VLANs don't cross and others allow them. So they have to uh, generally be equally configured. Then all you do is create a channel group. So here we're saying interface FA01 through 2, and we're assigning those ports. So we went in using the range command, we went into both ports at once. You don't have to do that. You could go in the ports individually, and the ports don't have to be uh, in order like that. You could go into port 1 and port 5 and port 11. They don't have to be in any kind of physical order but they are here, and you would just assign the command channel group one, which would be the first channel group, and obviously if you make another channel group, it could be channel group two. And again, those don't have to be in order necessarily. If you had some reason, you could create channel group three and not have a channel group one and two, it's up to you. And then I'm assigning the mode, and in this case, they're gonna both have the same mode um, of active. Then I'm gonna go in the channel group, so that's kind of Part one is to assign the ports to a channel group, and then I continue with the channel group, and in the channel group, notice I'm setting the switch port mode and the, um, and the allowed VLAN pruning, so I'm pruning the VLANs. I'm doing that there. I'm not going to do that on the physical ports. I'm going to do all of that configuration under the new logical interface of port channel one. In this demo, we're going to configure an LACP Ether channel. In this simple topology, we have three switches and we'll be making the Ether channel out of ports FA021 and FA022 between switch 1 and switch 2. I should note that you do not have to use ports that are in physical order. For instance, you could use ports 1, 5, and 7, and they don't have to match the number on the other side. So Port 21 on switch 1 could be connected to port 7 on switch 2. It makes no difference, but I numbered them all the same just to make it a little easier for us. I've also created a spanning tree with the root bridge of switch 1. Let's look at the spanning tree first. You'll see in the spanning tree output that the root bridge is switch one. You'll see on switch two that port FA021 is the root port pointing towards switch one and that FA022 has been put in a blocking state and is an alternate port. So we are ready to begin configuring our LACP ether channel, then we'll come back and do this show spanning tree command again, and we'll see our new port group, hopefully, 
comprised out of ports 21 and 22. Let's get started. The first part of configuring an ether channel is assigning the ports you want to the ether channel. As a note, the ports should all be the same bandwidth and they should be the same type of port, like a um, full duplex, that sort of thing. Now for the second part, we'll go into the logical ether channel we just created, port channel one, and we will add additional commands, essentially making these ports trunk ports. Now we'll go to switch one and repeat the same commands there. Okay, at this point we have configured our ether channel and we just need to take a look and make sure it is configured correctly. Notice it indicates there is one ether channel group labeled PO1 and it is an LACP ether channel consisting of ports FA021 and FA022. Okay, now let's take a look at the spanning tree again and see what's happened to ports FA01 and 22 on switch 2. Do you see the difference? Our root port is now our port group, consisting of FA021 and FA022. And you'll actually see PO1, it will be abbreviated PO1. If you take a look, you know, in various show commands, you'll see a new interface show up called PO1. And if you take a look, you would see the settings that you put in applied on both the interface and in the channel group settings. That's it for Ether Channel. Have a great week.